Do you want to know how to fly into Class D airspace with ATC Communications? In this video, I'll give you not only a briefing and a breakdown on the step-by-step -step process, but also show you a real-world example in our flight school airplane. So let's get after it. Welcome aviators, my name is Chris Palmer, a master CFI based in Alaska, coming to you from angleofattack.com HQ. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to fly into Class D airspace with ATC. Some of you may already be flying at a Class D airport or maybe even busier, but many will be flying at uncontrolled airfields and communicating with ATC, especially at an airport, may be new or foreign to you. And maybe it's coming up on a cross country solo and you wanna know what you're doing before you go. So we're going to jump in the airplane in a few minutes and I'll show you a real world example with some interesting twists. So make sure you stick around for that. Things don't always go perfectly as planned, so those little twists just add a little extra advanced knowledge onto the basics of flying into Class D airspace. First, I'm going to very quickly go over the basic steps we'll follow when flying into Class D airspace with ATC. First, you wanna tune the frequencies that you're going to use, so that being the ATIS, the tower, and maybe even the ground. You'll want to listen for and get the ATIS because you'll need to repeat back that information and it'll tell you things you need to know like what runway to use. You'll want to contact ATC or the Class D tower about 10 miles out. To enter that airspace, you need to hear your call sign or tell number. Uh, you need to hear that before you're allowed to enter. When you hear that, that is basically your clearance to enter the airspace. As you're operating with ATC, especially as it gets really busy, make sure you listen very carefully throughout the process. And of course, as always, comply with commands from ATC. Remain vigilant as well, because there are some little twists here, again, that you'll see that you need to keep ATC in check as well. So let's jump into the airplane now and let's see the real world example of me flying into Class D airspace. And you guys can see how this works in action. Okay, folks, welcome to the cockpit. We are going to be going into a Class D airspace. So this video is gonna show you my process going into this not so busy Class D airspace, but the process I go through to get there and how I use the tools that are at my disposal here. So obviously you do some flight planning beforehand. You kind of know what you're getting into, what the airspace was like, maybe even know if it were busy or not. But just for argument's sake, Let's say that um, you don't know the frequencies and you need to get those frequencies. So I'm going to go here to the iPad and go to the airports tab and go to Kenai, which is where I'm headed. Uh, the first frequency we're going to get to because Class D airspace is a very simple airspace. It's just one cylinder, this 2,500 feet tall AGL, 2,500 AGL. Um, we are only basically going to be talking to tower. There are some different instances there where you may be talking to another uh, body, another uh, source of air traffic control. Right now I'm up with flight following on center, so they'll probably hand me off. But that is the next frequency I'm expecting. So I am going to dial in here, as you can see, 121.3. What's really nice about these avionics from Garmin is it actually tells me the identifier for that frequency in the local area. So I get a, a bit of a boost that shows me it is in fact Kenai Tower. I am about 13 minutes out now from the airport and a, a quick like rule of thumb for your descent is you divide how much altitude you have in AGL. So how much altitude you have to lose from your cruise altitude to your landing location. And you divide that by essentially uh, you want to do 500 feet per minute. So in this case, I'm at 3,500 feet. Actually, I got off my altitude a little bit. Um, at 3,500 feet, uh, I'll get back up there, and then we will take essentially take seven minutes to descend down. So 500 feet per minute, seven minutes. We'll start our descent seven minutes out. That's just a ballpark. Once you get a little bit closer, we'll be able to eyeball it and uh, set up for the landing better, um, whether they 
have us go to the other side of the airport and fly a traffic pattern or it's more of a straight in. That's an interesting thing about flying into a Class D airspace or really any airspace for that matter. There's not a traffic pattern in, in the sense that you're not making traffic pattern calls like you do in an uncontrolled field. You are going to do what they tell you to do. So it could be a, a like a, a right down downwind entry. It could be a right base entry. It could be a straight in entry. It's up to them. So uh, you just got to listen for that and make sure that you're diligent with that. Another thing we need to do is we need to dial in the Kenai weather. So I'm going to do that now. It's right here on 4 flight 133.35. So I'll go here to my uh, secondary radio. Actually, already in there. So we'll swap it over and listen. Close. Kenai Airport information, kilo time 20530. And it's at 231 right here. Runway 20 right, 20 left gravel in use, expect a visual approach. Notice the airman, runway 20 water closed. Advise on initial contact information, kilo. Okay, I got the information. The information kilo, wind 180 at 9er, we're using runway 20 right and 2956 for the altimeter. So I'll change my altimeter here. Okay, okay as you can see on the iPad here, um, we're less than seven minutes out, so I'm going to start my descent at 500 feet per minute as we descend. We don't have to tell ATC, I'm talking to Air Traffic Control now, unless they tell us to notify them of any altitude deviations. Usually that would be a thing with if there's other traffic out there, so I'm just going to start on down. I like to get my speed back on my descent if I can, as long as I'm not going outside the parameters of the airplane with your different um, structural air speeds. I like to get some of that speed going downhill back. Just make sure my engine doesn't rev above also where it should be. So that's looking good. Kenai Tower, Skyhawk 2423 uniform. We're six to the south, landing Kenai information, Kilo. November 2423 Uniform Kenai Tower. Report entering a left downwind from a 20 right. Keep it kind of wide. We'll report a left downwind 20 right. We'll keep it wide. 23 Uniform. That's the 23 Uniform. Traffic will be a Cub in left traffic east of the airport for the gravel strip. 23 Uniform, thanks. So now he's alerted me of other traffic. There's some people approaching on the opposite way. Uh, just doing practice approaches and there's also a cub I'm working with so you're dealing with traffic they tell you what to do you can see how fluid the communication is keep it wide do this do that he told that other guy to the offset to the east so their job is to deconflict traffic that is their sole purpose so um, good job and now we're basically going to be setting up for landing here in a few moments Are you enjoying this video and want to learn more? We have an entire library of structured videos on angleofattack.com. We call this online ground school and it's how you'll ace the written test required by the FAA. It's go at your own pace and all accessible right now on any device. Go check it out yourself or recommend it to your friends. Now back to the video. Uniform, runway two left, clear to land. Uh, two three uniform, you cleared me for uh, two zero right, or rather two zero right downwind. I'm on the downwind two zero right. That's a two three uniform. Yeah, sorry about that. Runway two zero right, you cleared to land. Clear to land two zero right two four two three uniform. We'll be parking transient. All right, thanks. Okay, so a little bit of a kerfuffle there. He told me something different. Um, I wanted to verify because that runway is right there. I'd have to swing back around and get in in an odd way. People make mistakes. Just want to make sure that. Change of plan. Continue downwind. Continue downwind. Two four two three uniform. So we got all sorts of stuff going on. Now we have a commercial flight coming in. 
that will be landing. This is why we have airspace. Things are busy. That's IFR traffic. He's going to get um, priority, more so because he's a transport category airplane. And then they're going to have me come in behind him. And we're also going to have to deal with wake turbulence here too, so I'll talk to you guys about that briefly. 126, traffic's off the direction. About two mile final, they'll circle to the west. All right, thanks, 126. So that's the 2 3 uniform, your traffic to follow dash 8 is ahead and to your left. Traffic in sight, 2 4 2 3 uniform. So that's the 2 3 uniform, cross your wake turbulence, runway 2 0 right. Clear to land number 2. Clear to land number 2, follow the traffic, 2 4 2 3 uniform. So I've got to stay above and land beyond that airplane. Correction on the gravel, sorry. Yeah, I was screwed. All right, we'll be, we'll be looking for my flight 126. We were both trying to figure out how that worked, didn't we? Yeah. Geronimo 29 Papa, for now, stay uh, west of center line. Uh, traffic be a Learjet inbound on the approach. And I'm going to turn oh, now because he's way, really way faster than me. And I'm going to stay high on this approach. I'm landing at the other side of the airport anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that part. The car peat. Gas is on both, undercarriage is fixed gear, make sure it's enriching, prop seatbelt switches, landing lights on. Go to T-Bone. Alright, we'll climb to 2500 and then uh, are we direct T-Bone? You know, yeah, once you get to 2500 then you can proceed direct. Alright, uh, up to 2500 then direct T-Bone, you know, you're Papa. Cup 2-1 Papa, runway 20 left, gravel cleared for the touch and go, traffic to dash 8, landing on the pavement. 2-1 Papa, cleared for... Landing two zero left, half traffic. Okay, so now I'm staying high and above that traffic. Even though it's a, a twin engine turboprop, can carry about 20 ish people, it's nothing to mess with. And security so, again, we'll just uh, cross T burn outbound entering the hole. Should be fine. Uh, we're we'll gonna land plenty out, beyond. We're do one full left of the hole before coming back on the island. Done our landing checklist, car beats in. 3051, uh, traffic do my first uh, notch north, flaps. Uh, T-Bone there maneuvering another tri-facer between 25 and 3000. Okay, sounds good, we'll be looking. Security 51, we'll go to one the box. So we're number two to land, two zero right. I'm confirming that runway, I can see it here as well on the iPad. Just confirm where you're at, where you're at what you're doing, especially with uh, Parallel runways like that. Ready for 126. Taxi via Echo Juliet. Monitor ground. Echo Juliet, monitor ground. That's the, the same thing we're going to do, so kind of expecting that. 100. Okay, everything looks good. I'll check the winds. I think we got a little bit of a left crosswind here. I'm pretty happy with one notch of flaps. I might end up doing two. It's a big, big runway, got lots of space. Again, we're landing long. Got to think about all these little things as part of this. See a Super Cub down there landing too, you guys probably can't see that. Plenty of space. Nice little stiff crosswind. Well, it's not that stiff, but nice and steady. Okay, here we go. Touching down all nice and soft like. Okay, right on center line. A little bit of aileron yeah, into the wind. 2423 uh, uniform. Taxi via Echo Juliet. Monitor ground. Echo Juliet, monitor ground, 2423 uniform. Okay, I just wrote that on the iPad. You guys probably saw that. I wrote Echo Juliet so I could repeat it back. I could also write that on the, like our, our actual path. I just did that there. He wants me to monitor ground, so I dialed in the ground frequency. Okay, that's in standby, so I can just switch it over. Generally, that tower controller is also doing the ground control too, at least at uh, at smaller or, or less busy Class D airspace. So they're just gonna monitor that and, or I'm gonna monitor that, they monitor it too. We should be all good. 
So here's Echo, I'm on Echo. I verify that on the iPad too, good situational awareness. And that's it for Class D airspace. I don't expect they'll say anything else. I'm gonna taxi here on Echo Juliet, go and have lunch with a friend, and I will talk to you guys back in the studio for a wrap up on this uh, arrival into a Class D airspace. So join us on the other video as well where we talk about the departure from the Class D airspace. But let's go back to the studio and talk about that now. Thanks for joining us on this lesson. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new. Subscribe to get more in the future and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any more great content from Angle Attack. I'm Chris Palmer signing off. Fly safe and until next time, throttle on. <laughs>